The alarm went off. Today is the day I let the AI control every single thing I do, but for one day only. Let's see if the bot can help me survive through this day, shall we? I grab my laptop, open ChatGPT, and type in the most important question any Homo sapiens can ask the AI in the morning. What should I have for breakfast? The chatbot says, good morning. How about some scrambled eggs with toast and avocado on the side? Or if you're in the mood for something sweet, you could make some pancakes or waffles with fresh fruit and syrup. Another option could be a breakfast burrito with scrambled eggs, cheese, and your choice of meat or veggies. Hope that helps. Huh, this artificial dude talking to me is pretty sweet. And the menu he suggested is pretty good. Still, I grab my usual cup of coffee and ignore the chatbot's piece of advice. I mean, who's got time to cook all those delicacies in the morning? I brush my teeth, took a shower, and now I gotta choose something to wear. Chatbot, need your help. What should I wear today? That depends on what your plans are for the day and the weather. If it's hot outside, you might want to wear something light and breathable like shorts and a t-shirt. If it's cooler, you could go for jeans and a sweater. If you have any specific events or activities planned, you may want to dress accordingly. Ultimately, wear whatever makes you feel comfortable and confident. Yeah, that makes sense and stuff, but it's not that informative. By the way, the weather's awesome today and I don't really feel like working today. Hey, maybe I should skip work today. What do you think, Mr. GPT? As an AI language model, I don't have access to your work schedule or responsibilities. It's best to check with your employer or supervisor to see if you need to go to work today. Nah, that's boring. You know what? Chatbot is just like my mom. She always says the very same thing, except she's not an AI language model. Okay, Chatbot, maybe you can at least invent a decent lie to tell my boss. I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I cannot assist you in inventing a lie to tell your boss. It's important to be honest with your employer and communicate any changes in your availability or schedule as soon as possible. If you need to take a day off, it's best to be upfront and provide a valid reason for your absence. Nah, this chatbot is like those boring kids at school. Whatever. Yeah, GPT is a cool thing if you have some actual, not a rhetorical question. It can give you a nice recipe, help with homework, or even your work project. But once you start talking to the chatbot as if it were a real person, it says, as an AI language model, and all the fun fades away. Yeah, I definitely didn't expect it to be boring. Wow, what's going on? Everything seems to be moving so fast. You're going through a wormhole of some kind and can't stop. You're moving faster and faster until you see the light at the end. Suddenly, it's all black. You wake up after a few seconds in a pixelated world. You're in some kind of forest surrounded by giant trees and rocks. You get up and look around you. There's wind, but you can't feel it on your skin. You look at your hands and see that you're wearing gauntlets. There's a button on your left hand that shows your avatar. You click it, and you see yourself protected with a full outfit and stats. Looks like you're wearing a rogue desert outfit with a shawl covering your face. There's an option that shows a selection of skins. You go through them and see a bunch of wacky clothes for all occasions and scenarios. You realize that the outfit you're wearing doesn't match the environment, so you select something suitable – a robe with a hood to cover your hair. After changing your skin, you walk around the area and try to see if there's anyone around. You hear some noise coming from what appears to be a small village. You head over there and start walking among the crowd. You can see everyone's profile and stats through your avatar. You get a notification. You enrolled in an experimental program to be in this virtual world for 365 days. After completing the experiment, they reward you with $5 million if you find the secret treasure. According to the organizers, it will take a year to find it. The clock starts ticking. The first 10 people who find the treasure will win the prize. You approach different kiosks to try and find a way to interact, but nothing is working. After walking for a while, you get a notification that someone from the experiment is nearby. They're not too far on the map, but it doesn't tell you who they are or what they look like. You approach the character and see that it's a female Madge dressed in a flashy way. Before you say anything, she tells you that every conversation is recorded, so you have to be careful. She shows you some features that you missed. 
she has the option to transport you to other metaverses. She opens a portal and takes you to a randomly generated reality through a wormhole, similar to the one you went through on your way here. You close your eyes and wake up in some empty city. It's raining heavily. You get a notification that you're in an unknown area of the metaverse. You change your clothes to blend in with the environment and snoop around. You get to the town square and see that this place is on the dark side of the metaverse. The girl took you off course to delay you from finding the treasure. You can't find the girl who took you here, and for some reason, you can't transport to another metaverse. Another notification pops up, showing you that two more people from the experiment are nearby. You start walking, keeping your head to the ground. You bump into someone from the experiment, looking like a giant lizard. He interacts with you and tells you that this place isn't safe and you should go with him. Your gut feeling tells you not to trust him. He takes you to a back alley, and you immediately realize that something isn't right. After repeatedly tapping on the button, you're taken to a futuristic-looking city with thousands of users. Your costume draws a lot of attention, so you immediately change into something modern to blend in. You explore the city and see many familiar brands from the real world. The metaverse earns income through innovative advertising, which targets users who have similar interests. Many of these ads show products that you can buy in this virtual world and use them. You check your balance and see that you have enough crypto coins to buy plenty of things. But the experiment only provides you with a certain quota per day. If you violate any terms or rules, then your quota will be reduced. And just like in the real world, you need currency to survive in the metaverse. You don't need food or water here. In this world, they want you to buy advertised items to progress. You find out that there are other people in the experiment attending an exclusive party with some celebrities. But the only way to get inside is to buy a special pair of shoes as NFTs. These are non-fungible tokens that determine you as the real owner of this item, even though there might be plenty of them around. They're registered to your name in the public domain. The big problem is that they cost a lot. You can't wait until your quota increases, so you find a creative way to enter. After a while, you see someone who is about to attend the party and engage with him. He accepts, and you propose trading one of your valuable skins for his shoes. After negotiating, he finally agrees, and you get the shoes to enter. You're automatically accepted and try to mingle. The theme of the party is hip-hop. So, you change skins for the occasion and try to find more people like you. No luck. You find an ornament, which is your first clue to getting closer to the prize. The people at the party notice that you're in the experiment and try to kick you out. But after dodging the security, you grab the ornament and break into safety. The ornament reads that for the next few months, you'll have to visit the four corners of the Earth. You just can't jump into any metaverse randomly. It has to be adjacent ones. So, one by one, you head to different parts of the metaverse to search for clues collecting precious NFTs and trading them with random users to unlock other places. You visit places from scorching deserts to candy lands and everything else in between. A few months later, you finally complete the quest for the ornament. You're in the final spot, which is a sky town in the clouds. Everything is powered by the wind and giant birds. You get a notification of a clue that reads, You're closer to the prize. You have to cross the threshold of reality to find the treasure. You scratch your head in confusion, trying to understand what it could mean. Suddenly, you see the girl who took you to the dangerous metaverse town. She is one of the few people who reached as far as you did. She then disappears into the crowd. You can't let her beat you so you start chasing her. You can spot her running through the crowd. You get caught up with some people who initiate a conversation with you. She gets on a giant eagle and flies away. You spend the next couple of months trying to figure out where to go. You revisit some of the old places to see if you missed out on anything. Only a month left until the experiment ends. Then you realize that you've been doing it wrong the whole time. You teleport to a random location and get into the wormhole. Now you're on the threshold of reality. So while you're floating through space, 
you stop the teleportation halfway and freeze there. You open your stats and see that you can't access anything except one hidden button. You've canceled many trips halfway, but this option wasn't available before. You click it and find yourself in the land between reality and virtual space. You're in the Limboverse. Everything here seems so real. You can even smell and feel objects and temperatures. But the landscape is flipping, and you're trying to jump across the floating marble tiles to reach the diamond. There's a fire underneath you. You try to remember that this isn't real, and nothing will happen. You jump across until you finally reach the end. The virtual space starts glitching as you approach the diamond. You grab it and add it to your inventory. You read a message, the treasure is in you. A secret menu opens and reveals the $5 million in your bank account and a sign-out option. You tap on it. Another wormhole takes you back to reality. You take off your VR glasses and see your bank account filled with the prize money. You look around and notice the rest of the volunteers still in the game. After checking the time, you find out that you were in the metaverse for only 12 hours, even though it felt like a year out there. Have you ever wondered why all planets are perfectly round? And what if these celestial bodies decided to break the rules and change their shape? Would we end up with square planets, triangular moons, or maybe even intergalactic shapes we can't even imagine? Well, let's find out. So how do planets form in the first place? The universe is filled with swirling clouds of dust and gas. These clouds, called molecular clouds, consist of various elements and compounds, such as hydrogen, helium, carbon, oxygen, and so on. They're like a cosmic kitchen filled with the ingredients needed to cook up some brand new planets. The first step in the recipe for planetary formation is called the accretion theory. Let's say that something happens that causes gravitational instability like a supernova goes off nearby or something. This pushes the gas and dust in the cloud and causes them to come together. Because of gravity, these particles start falling toward a central point. They become more tightly packed together, like when you squeeze a ball in your hand. And eventually, they're squeezed so hard that the cloud starts to flatten into a disk shape. Kind of like when you mix flour and water to make pizza dough. This disk is called a protoplanetary disk. It's also spinning because the cloud's particles had some rotation to begin with. Now, imagine these tiny dust particles and gas molecules dancing around in the disk. Sometimes they bump into each other. And when they do, they stick together like Velcro. These little clumps of dust and gas are called planetesimals. They're the building blocks of planets. And as the planetesimals continue to collide and merge, they grew larger and larger, forming protoplanets. The protoplanets were getting serious about their size and their gravity became stronger. Some of them got so massive that they became the grand masters of their cosmic neighborhoods, the planets we know and love. Each planet had its own unique recipe of gases, rocks, and sometimes even water. But why do the planets look like spheres? Well, it's all because of gravity. Let's go back to our protoplanets. Imagine you're squeezing a balloon with your hands. The air inside of the balloon pushes back, creating pressure. Something similar happens with planets. Gravity squeezes its material inward, pulling in towards the center. And since gravity acts equally in all directions, it pulls material from all sides toward the center of mass, resulting in a sphere-like shape. And that material pushes back with pressure, resisting the force of gravity. In the end, they both find a sweet spot where they balance each other out. It's called hydrostatic equilibrium, a fancy term that means everything inside a planet is in balance. But that's not all. Another thing that makes the planet spherical is their rotation. Think about a ball of Play-Doh or something like that. Imagine you spin it rapidly. The material starts to push outward, making the Play-Doh bulge at the equator and flatten at the poles. The same thing happens to planets. As they spin on their axes, the combination of gravity and rotation pushes the material outward, making the planet bulge at the equator. They low-key want to become disks again. However, gravity doesn't want any lumpy planets. It wants them to be nice and round, so it keeps pulling on the material, trying to make everything as compact as possible. Eventually, gravity wins, and the planet settles into a spherical shape. 
Let's take some examples from our planetary playlist. Jupiter, the giant of the solar system, loves to show off its ablateness. It spins so fast that it becomes noticeably squished at the poles and chubby in the middle. It's like a spinning top with a cute belly. Saturn, the ringed wonder, also joins the oblate party. It spins around with its beautiful rings, and its ablateness is even more pronounced than Jupiter's. These examples show how rotation can give planets a unique shape. They go from being perfectly round to having a delightful bulge around the middle. It's like cosmic pottery, where the spinning motion creates a playful and distinct shape. So, now you know why the planets are round. But what's more interesting is, what if they weren't? What if they were, let's say, cubical? Or even triangular? Well, let's see. A cube-shaped or a triangle-shaped planet would have its mass spread out in a completely different way than a sphere. And you know what that means? Gravity would be all shook up too. On a spherical planet, gravity pulls everything towards the center because the mass is evenly distributed around that center. But when we introduce a cube-shaped or triangle-shaped planet, things get interesting. If you're standing at the center of one of those faces, you'd feel the strongest pull of gravity. That's because the faces are the closest to the center of gravity. And as you venture away from the center and start walking towards the edges, gravity starts playing tricks on you. You would feel the struggle against the steep angled gravity. Walking on those edges would feel just like climbing a mountain or walking on a super steep slope. All because gravity wants you right in the middle of the face and nowhere else. Now imagine the terrain along the edges and corners. It's a barren, rocky, and dry landscape. Why? Well, all the water would pool in at the center of each face, leaving the edges high and dry. And the air quality? Well, it's either non-existent or so thin that it can't support life. Not the coziest place to set up camp, that's for sure. And don't forget your warm clothes, lunch, and hiking boots. You'll need them because of the crazy climate. The type of climate you'll encounter on our cube or triangle-shaped Earth depends on how it spins. If it rotates at its corners, each side would enjoy a mild, temperate climate. However, if it rotates on an axis through two of its faces, things get intense. Picture a roller coaster version of our current climate. Some faces would be polar wonderlands, icy and chilly. The top and bottom faces for the cube, and the bottom face for the triangle. Meanwhile, the other sides would be completely different. In a cube, they would be scorching hot with an equatorial climate that would make you break a sweat. Instead of sunlight gently curving along the surface, it would directly beam onto these faces. Talk about feeling the heat. And on a triangular planet, the sunlight would strike the faces at an angle. This angled sunlight would create fascinating temperature variations across the planet. Imagine this. As you move from the base of the triangle towards the tip, the temperatures would gradually decrease. The base, where the sunlight hits most directly, would be the hottest region, just like the equatorial climate we're familiar with on our spherical Earth. But as you venture towards the tip, the angle of sunlight would be less direct, leading to cooler temperatures. But the base is still super cold and dark, since the sunlight doesn't directly reach it. So the triangle would be absolutely crazy in terms of temperature changes and climate zones. By the way, you know that cozy blanket of air we call the atmosphere? Well. On our angular Earth, things would get a little topsy-turvy. Gravity would be pulling stronger from the center of each face. The result? The atmosphere would go through some crazy changes. Picture this. At the center of each face where gravity is strongest, the atmosphere would gather and thicken. It would be like a bustling city, full of air molecules. But as you venture towards the edges, things would start to thin out. The atmosphere would become scarce and very thin. So breathing along the edges would be quite a challenge, and the edges would be a tough neighborhood for life to thrive. Moreover, a thinner atmosphere means less protection from the sun's radiation and solar winds, so corners and edges would be extremely dangerous for humans. Of course, this is all just a playful exploration of what could be. Our Earth loves its spherical shape, and that's a good thing. But there's no harm in imagining wild and wonderful possibilities. So keep your imagination soaring and continue to marvel at the marvels of our amazing planet, however it may be shaped.